We have something special for you this morning. Do you? Um, how well do you know your films? I think I know them pretty well. I kind of QC everything after mastering everything, after mixing everything. So I'm, um, I think I'm ready to take on whatever challenge you have. A little challenge. Yeah. Would, you, would you be able to pick out your movie in, in a crowd of other movies just by the sound? I don't know. That sounds, that sounds like a challenge for sure. Well, let's see if you're ready for Ooh. Sound Off with Gary Rizzo. Oh. Are you ready to play? <laughs> that just somebody give me a print of that. <laughs> yeah. I'm just, I'm just sad that I don't have the microphone. So the way this is going to work, we have, we have six lucky guests in the audience. We have seven cards of films that okay. you've worked on. Okay. We're going to play sound only, and okay. you will choose from these seven cards what the film is. Oh, I get to choose. Yes. It's, so it's multiple choice. As well as the audience. Okay. And then we're going to compare and keep score. Okay. <clears throat> I think I'm ready. All right. Go. Don't show your answer. Oh, no. I should hide my cards. Are, are you ready? Close to the vest. Okay. Show us your answer. I had Tron... Tron Legacy, without a doubt. Let's see. Let's go to the tape to see. <laughs> so let's talk about Tron. Um, what, what was it like mixing this movie? Um, this was a whole load of fun to work on, um, working for director Joe Kaczynski, who is outstanding. I've done probably two or three films for him, and he's got some other really good projects coming up over the horizon. I don't think we can talk about specifically what they are, but he's, he's a really, really talented filmmaker. He's, um, he's got, he comes from an architecture background, and he's all about these interesting structures of elements, not only within the picture, but within the sound and manipulation of those elements once you get into the mix. So what jumped out to me in that little sonic playback was the filter sweep right at the beginning after the crowds. You hear this huge amount of crowds come in and then this big filter sweep kind of wipes it all out so you can very quickly rack your sonic focus into the building of that bike. Um, and then the bikes themselves have a huge vocabulary of uh, when they're moving and they're twisting and they're turning and they're jumping and they're landing and they have weight and they've got scale and they also have a, a whole lot of speed to them as they go out. I always think you need to have uh, uh, recently I've been using this in, in all the, the Dunkirk um, interviews and things. If every sound has a pace, meaning the, the amount of momentum it has and the way it is propelling the mix, it has a pulse, meaning the amplitude, the volume, the way that it kind of hits you, and a purpose. Where is the purpose in terms of the story and the carrying of our mix through that story? If it has a pace, a pulse, and a purpose, then you've got a sound that really is going to work in your mix. If it doesn't have really, if it's missing any of those elements, then you got to question, why are we using this sound? Why is it here? Um, but also, Tron Legacy was... I believe the first Dolby 7.1 mix that mm. went out, 7.1. If it wasn't the first, it was one of the very early ones that was commercially released in, in Dolby 7.1. We have another movie. So if you'll grab your cards, okay. yes. uh, who's it in the, in the number two spot? Number two. I noticed you didn't grab the cards and right. shuffle them listening. so knowingly as you did the first I was one. listening, yeah. I think I know what this one is, though. And I hope, yeah. Have you selected? I have. All right, let's see your cards, Hunter. Or the one card. Is it uh, The Incredibles? Oh, I don't know. Let's see, Gary. I'm going to go with that was the bong saver sequence from Jay and Silent oh, Bob Strike yeah, Back. Yeah. Let's see who's right. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. 
<laughs> I remember I was actually hanging out um, the day that they shot the initial footage of that, and Kevin was so excited that he took the video playbacks and started cutting the video playback footage that night. He was like, I can't believe this. I got Mark Hamill on set, and we're having a, a bong saber fight in my own movie. This is amazing. He was so excited. <laughs> So what is it? What is it like to you know to go from a drama to to a comedy? And how do you do you approach? A Variety comedy? is the spice of life, Mike. Uh, I know. <laughs> it's um, I know every day. This is a kind of a big picture answer to that. Every day is a different challenge. Every day is a different puzzle, and you never really know what the solution is going to be. Uh, you don't know what the challenges are going to be that morning until you get in there and, and you figure it out and you use all your tools and you use all of your experience to try and interpret what your director or picture editor or producer is asking of you, interpret their words, and then use your knowledge and your experience to deliver an answer. And hopefully, um, you know your tools well enough that the tools are transparent to the filmmakers that you're serving. Just because you have the tools doesn't mean that you have to use all the tools. You just, you know, it's kind of like the dentist. Don't use the drill if you don't need to use the drill, okay? <laughs> just kind of scrape away and do what you need to do, but be effective and, you know, be uh, proactive and use your ears and go with your gut instinct. Your gut instinct is almost always right. Um, and the answer is almost always on the screen. Mm -hmm. If you're stuck and you're like, why well, can't I can't hear the things that I want to hear in this sequence this quickly, make sure you're looking up versus looking down. It's very easy to get mm. stuck here, but a very wise mixer, Richard Portman, once said, the answer is almost always on yeah. the screen. All right, number three. I gotta get my number list. Three. He's getting his cards ready, getting his cards ready. You know for sure. Ah, uh, yeah. All right. And, the, and was yeah. a dead giveaway. Yeah, it, it, yeah. it, it kind of. Uh, Interstellar. Yeah. Christopher Nolan, of course. <clears throat> I'll see your Interstellar. <laughs> oh, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Here we go. Here's the scene. That's an excellent choice. Somebody made a picture edit. It, yeah. That was a bold choice. Was, yeah. <laughs> um, actually, what happens in the picture edit is one of my favorite moments, and that's why I really recognize it, oh. because it's a, a practical effect was used with McConaughey, where he was on a rig, a vibrating rig, mm -hmm. and, um, and, and his voice was very naturally, emphatically modulating. Uh, and it wasn't a flange or a phase or anything, but it was just a, one of those roller coaster style. Uh, mm. And it's um, frightening if you hear it in the theatrical dynamic of the mix. And this is one of the, I think I'll use grandest as, as my adjective. It's one of the grandest mixes that we've attempted to do um, to go from that um, ejection sequence which you, you're just hanging on that dialogue of eject, which is really the point, you, to the point where he can barely hear the command. He's barely conscious enough to get that command, which is you're with him in that moment to go from that very loud to that very quiet, mm. where you go from this very complex, lots of low end, lots of anxiety, lots of overwhelming information to a single thread of a track where he is just struggling to even catch his own breath and he's still physically shaking, incredibly effective. Incredibly effective, and hats off to Lee Smith, our picture editor, and to Chris mm -hmm. for constructing that, being the architect of that. For us, there was no question what needs to happen in that moment. You have to play that anxiety as big as you possibly can, and we have some, I have to say, what I love working about, what I love one of the reasons I love working with this team is because we've developed our own kind of um, 
special sauce, for lack of a better term, that we use uniquely with Chris and on Chris's movies when we are doing final mixes that uh, allows us to uh, um, do some unique, uh, how do I want to put it? It's special sauce. There's something special yeah. in Chris's mixes that we just don't do with anybody else's mixes. It's, it, it, gives it, it, it allows for a greater dynamic. It allows for a greater frequency response. It allows for a more emotionally effective mix. We have just a, a couple more tools at our disposal that we just don't always use. Mm -hmm. That's all I can say about that. <laughs> okay, we have number four. Where's number four? All right, your name? Uh, Andre. Okay, Andre, what's up? Nice here we go. You. you ready? <laughs> There's... Oh, so good. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go with The Incredibles. Is that right? I'll I'll go All with right. the Incredibles as well. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what that is. <laughs> I'm How's pretty that? sure I know every sample of this mix. I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I'm sure you do. Is yeah. It's um, that one's a. They're all special in their own unique way, but that one is particularly special to me. It was relatively early on in my mixing career, and it was a huge step forward. Um, and I have to give some props to Randy Tom, mm -hmm. my mixing partner on that one, for standing up for me and making sure I was, you know, in the ring. And um, and I gotta thank Brad. I saw Brad last week. I don't. I guess I can say it. Um, this one is really fresh in my mind, even though it was an older mix in this list, um, because we just um, did a remaster of it for some future home video oh, release wonderful. that's happening. So it's very fresh. I just saw Brad, and we knocked out a couple of notes that maybe were some old outstanding notes that we always wanted to do. Not that oh. the mix wasn't great originally. Yeah. We didn't change it. The mix is the same. It really is the same. We just did a couple little, a couple little fine tweaks. adjustments. Um, We're going to go on a little bit of rapid fire. We're moving to number five. Oh, here we and go. your name? Taylor. Hi, Taylor. Hi. Taylor, where are you? Oh, there you are. I see you. Are you ready? Yes. Here we go. That, that, that's actually one of the harder ones, I think. It is. It's, it's harder to try. Are we going in, like, difficulty sequence? Is that what we're... No, not necessarily. Okay. Taylor, what do you think? Uh, how to ta train your dragon. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's how to train your dragon. Let's see if we're right. And we're right. <laughs> I love that movie. That's that's a really, that's a great one. Um, Dean Dubois is the director on that one, and he's such a sweetheart. He is so, not only a cons considerate person, mm -hmm. but he's so such a, a thorough, thoughtful storyteller. It's a privilege to be able to work for him. I missed the sequel. I was on something else. There was some scheduling conflict. But um, I'll knock on something wood, marble, whatever it is for number three that I'm going to get onto that one. But yeah, that, I remember that opening sequence was a very complicated sequence with um, lots of sound effects, um, but a beautiful music cue by John Powell. And then there's voiceover on top of it. And um, Jay Baruchel, I think that's the actor's name. Um, and he's got this very particular voice to play the, the lead character. And it's got, it sits in this funny little frequency range, which is very endearing, but it was a very tricky sequence mm -hmm. to kind of get in and out and still understand what he was saying. 
Um, and the design behind Toothless is great. There's that beautiful musical sequence where they're doing this Black Stallion mm -hmm. style, trading off and becoming friends. And that's a special one. Number six. Number six. Who's up? Hi. Hi. Hey, what's, what's up? Name? Not much. <laughs> There's a special quality to the low frequencies in that one. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure I know what this one is. You want to go first? Um, I'm going to say The Dark Knight. Oh. I'm actually going to go with Inception. Ooh, let's see who's right. Same filmmaker, though, so it could... <laughs> the Dark Knight, oh, wow. <laughs> Who's the mic? I lose. <laughs> I was wondering it. if that but was... But there's a was. magical element of the low end in that bike that is very, very special. And hats off to Richard King, our, our supervising sound editor. Um, and that's a... There's some good, good stuff in that frequency range. There's some good stuff in the low mids. And that oscillation, that's a big one. The Dark Knight. What scene of Inception... Well, there was, I thought it was actually the earlier dream, one of the first dream sequences when we were two layers in the dream leading up to uh, uh, before he falls back in the tub, when I thought it was leading up to one of those explosions wow. in there. And again, we were focusing that scene in some similar frequency ranges mm -hmm. in there. That's why I thought without the visual, oh, maybe that's... And in those mixes, we're always kind of blurring the line between design and music and right. what is what. Um, and so similar structure, different scene, um, but that's the bike. Now that I know it's like, of course that's the bike. <laughs> of course that's how it works. The bat pond. That's all right. I lose. You guys win. <laughs> you win.